Albert Camus was a French Algerian writer, journalist, intellectual, and Nobel Prize winner in literature. He is best known for his novel The Stranger and his essay The Myth of Sisyphus. Camus was born in 1913 in what was the French colony of Algeria. Algeria was administered as a part of France from 1845 to 1962, although it was originally colonized in 1830. Camille lived with backdrop of colonial tension. As a child, he spent most of his life living in poverty. He did not live in a home with running water or electricity until he was a teenager. And as a European settler in the region, he was entitled to receive the benefits of a French education. In 1954, the Algerian War of Independence broke out. The war lasted until 1962, when European settlers were forced to leave the region and France surrendered its colonial war. My thesis examines Albert Camus' writings on colonialism and eventually decolonization. But moreover, how his ideas changed over time. Scholars have previously categorized Camus as a moralist seeking to apply France's Republican values of liberty, equality, and fraternity in Algeria. But instead, I argue that Camus is more complex than he has been previously perceived. I analyze his ideas on colonialism and decolonization, and I see how they change throughout three key periods. I argue that his ideas went through three specific stages between 1937 and 1958. The first was a stage concerned about equality, justice and humane conditions for Algeria's indigenous broker inhabitants. The second, about the necessity of a Franco-Arab coexistence in Algeria. And third, a stance against the means of terror and guerrilla warfare that Arab separatists used to <clears throat> assert themselves during the war of independence. So the first stage is one in which Kenny was concerned about the plight of Algeria's indigenous inhabitants. This is most evident in a collection of essays and newspaper articles that he wrote in 1939 titled The Misery of Cabelia. <clears throat> the Misery of Cabelia reflected Camus' understanding of the economic disparities between European and indigenous populations. It exposed the paper's readership to the destitution one could encounter in the region. Cabelia was an indigenous, mountainous region in the mountains north of Algiers and its residents were faced with extreme poverty and hunger. And on the map, you can see in northern Algeria, where you see the red area. So, encouraging the reader to take a position, can you stay? If you find this normal, then say so. But if you find it repellent, take action. And if you find it unbelievable, then please go and see for yourself. So the first stage, Camille is concerned about Algeria's indigenous residents. The second stage shows a shift. He was interested in trying to find a solution for Algeria's ethnic stratification. Camille believed that the solution was an improved Franco-Arab coexistence. From this still taken from the 1966 film, The Battle of Algiers, we can get an idea of the Franco-Arab tension with a European settler yelling, feel the Arab, don't let him get away. Can you develop these ideas in France while he was working for the clandestine resistance newspaper Combat? On assignment for Combat, Camus had returned to Algeria to visit family. A nationalist movement had been growing in Algeria, which resulted in a series of uprisings that are often argued to be the beginning of the Algerian War. During his visit, Camille wrote the article Crisis in Algeria, and it described how France's failed policies contributed to the uprisings. This is a turning point for Kenya, because he asserted that Algeria could be saved with reforms coming from the metropole. Now, Kenya's third stage was a stance against the means of terror and guerrilla warfare that Arab separatists utilized in Algeria. Kenya did not see decolonization as the solution, despite the fact that he was sympathetic toward Algeria's indigenous populations and opposed to the French government's use of torture, torture and as a method of interrogation. These clips, also from the Battle of Algiers, illustrate what Camus was opposed to. And to add to Camus' complexity, as late as 1959, he was writing to France's President Charles de Gaulle, asking for clemency 
about members of the Algerias Liberation Front who he believed were wrongly accused. So instead, can you believe that Algeria's indigenous populations needed to be freed from the colonial system? He argued that this could still be done if Algeria's European populations remained. Can you envision a peaceful coexistence through legislative changes that would guarantee the rights and participation of Algeria's indigenous residents? Drawing on centuries of colonialism in North Africa, can you believe that Algeria's indigenous and European residents had, were just as indigenous as the Arab and Berber populations? In his article, Algeria 1958, Camus wrote, there has never been an Algerian nation. The Jews, the Turks, Greeks, Italians, and Berbers all have a claim to lead this virtual nation. The French of Algeria are themselves an indigenous population in the full sense of the word. Sadly, Camus never got to see the end of the war, dying in a car accident in 1960. The Evian Peace Accords were signed in 1962, forcing France to surrender its colonial rule. Generations of Algerian settlers were faced with two choices. One, to remain in Algeria, adopt and be sanctioned to Muslim law, or two, to leave Algeria, which resulted in a mass exodus to the south of France. Now tensions between these populations still exist today, and they are palpable. So again, my thesis demonstrated Kenny's evolution of ideas with regard to the complicated subject of decolonization. I argued that his ideas evolved from one, a concern about Algeria's indigenous populations, two, the necessity of a Franco-Arab coexistence, and third, a stance against the violence and the idea that the French and indigenous residents had an equal claim to the region. Finally, we can see that can be grappled with tensions that still dominate French politics today. Thank you.